Hey everyone, welcome to another video review. Uh, I just got this in today, so I wanted to take the opportunity to just sort of uh, go over it. Pretty cool. This is from um, the soon to be released live action Aladdin from Disney. It's coming out uh, next Friday, official wide release in the United States. Um, so here's the box for it. Here's the actual lamp itself, and let's go through this thing layer by layer. Talk a little bit about it, hopefully give you some things of interest. So first of all, just some background uh, in case <clears throat> you don't know what these things are and how things work. Usually, uh, before a pretty you know major uh, motion picture release, and uh, over the past couple years, this has usually been more to do with like the live action fairy tales. Um, the, the Disney store, which is sort of like the, I guess, the commercial um, souvenir, um, what have you, branch of Disney. So like the online version of the Disney store, I guess, as well. They um, will release uh, memorabilia, merchandising to sort of cash in and, you know, take advantage of the, um, the major motion picture release. Now, the way they do this is a little bit tricky because, you know, these things, you know, there's no magic, right? You know, these things don't appear out of thin air. They have to be made. They have to be uh, produced. And uh, most of it, of course, is in China. Uh, maybe you know some parts in Korea or whatnot, but you know, I think the majority of this is is from factories in China. So the factory has to know, um, you know, what to make and how much to make, and they can't do it like you know in weeks or months. You usually have to give, I believe, a full year of sort of planning to get all of this stuff done. So just the way the timing works out, what it does is it kind of forces Disney and whoever is in charge of this, I suppose. They have to kind of gauge interest and they kind of have to you know, decide in advance how much to commission. I mean, obviously, if you commission too much and the movie's a flop and nobody cares, then uh, you're losing like you know, literally, I don't know how many millions or tens of millions of dollars of just unsold stock. And you know, that has happened where it just basically sits there you know, in the warehouses and just sort of kills, um, you know, basically kills the, the productivity kills the profit so to speak um, and then they have to put it on clearance and so I think one of the more notorious situations that come to mind was the uh, sequel to the live action Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass and uh, you know Alice the live action Alice in Wonderland directed by Tim Burton um, that was one of the you know one of the early billion dollar uh, billion dollar club movies uh, and it sort of started, in a sense, the whole live action craze because it was so successful. So you, you know, can hardly blame, I guess, uh, Disney for thinking that the sequel would at least approach the success of the original, but that didn't happen. But I think they uh, ordered the merchandise uh, quantity as if anticipating that demand, as if, as if anticipating that success, and that didn't happen. And so a lot of the, through the looking glass memorabilia was, um, you know, put on clearance and it was, you know, it was pretty bad. And the flip side of that is the Frozen phenomenon, when of course Disney uh, in the million years couldn't have dreamed that a animated motion picture would bring down a billion. I think Frozen was the first one to do that, and of course uh, it started the Frozen fever, the Frozen mania, <clears throat> and you know, uh, Elsa dresses were just flying off the shelves, and prices were getting stratospheric. And I could think a limited edition. Elsa dress uh, was going at fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, and even regular throwaway costume Elsa dresses um, that's official Disney, you know, Disney store wear, were looking at prices in the four or five hundred dollar range, which is ridiculous. You know, those things are usually sixty dollars and probably cost six dollars to make. So you kind of have examples of both. Now I got burned uh, early on when I really wanted a Cinderella slipper because when uh, they announced the live-action Cinderella. I was sure that they were going to create some really nice 
um, slippers, and I've mentioned in previous videos how much I love the um, motion picture, live action motion picture design of her slipper. And of course they did, but back then uh, I was a rookie and I didn't know. And by the time I even learned about this slipper, it had already been sold out and was going for a like quadruple price on eBay, which is crazy. Um, and then I, <coughs> I basically finally slowly learned that if you are interested in collectibles from um, a movie like Aladdin, let's just say, you got to start doing your research. You got to start checking the Disney Store online app. You, you got to start, you know, going on Facebook, looking through the message boards or on all, all that. You got to start doing it probably about, I would say, to be safe, about two to three months before the movie is even scheduled to be released because um, these things do get released early. A lot of times, a few weeks before the movie gets released. Um, and, you know, that can, that can really be problematic in terms of spoilers, but if you want to get what you want to get, then you have to uh, do that. And usually, for these type of movies, they will release a lot of, you know, clothes, um, just branded theme stuff. Lipstick, mirrors, compacts, dresses are really big. Um, and they usually release these really cool little collectibles, like pins and stuff like that as well. But you just have to take advantage of them because some of them are not limited, but a lot of them are limited uh, uh, as well. And some of them are even numbered. So for instance, like the Cinderella slipper was actually, um, I believe it was numbered. And um, that sells out really, really quick. So... Uh, this already began to make its appearance in some of the parks. This was first brought to my attention on a Facebook post from somebody who was at Disneyland Paris. Um, but what, the minute that came out, I immediately recognized the fact that, you know, it, it was coming to the Disney store soon. And so I was just kind of checking, checking, and lo and behold, I did find it. And um, I bought it. Uh, I think I bought it about uh, earlier this week, I think, right? Yeah, about early this week. So it took a couple of days to get to me. Um, so if you guys are still interested, hopefully it hasn't sold out yet. But you should act fast because these things do sell out quite quickly. So before getting into the, um, the actual box and the lamp itself, this is the, what it came in. So, you know, Disney packaging has been hit or miss lately. Uh, for some of the more unique collectibles, they don't protect them very well. It's just like trashed. But I can't complain about how this lamp came. So first, um, you know, this box, what we call the color box, uh, is in a bag, and then this bag is in this cardboard box. And then this cardboard box is then in a larger box, cardboard box, with uh, packing material around it. So th this is double boxed. So you can imagine um, that the corners here, you know, just pristine, uh, very, very nice quality. So pretty interesting. So you know, here it goes. And when you look at the outside, um, it reads um, that it's a replica lamp, Disney item number, made in China, and it says Kasha Fragile, made of glass, not a toy. So obviously, um, there's a little bit of confusion here because this is this is not made out of glass, okay? And uh, on the description, I think on the website, it said it was made out of like maybe, you know, resin or something. So um, it's not made out of resin. So we'll get to that when we get to the lamp itself. So let's take a look at the color lamp. Um, it's very nice. We got the uh, official uh, Disney insignia. It says right here, Genie's Lamp Limited Edition of 4,000. And below uh, is the same thing uh, in French. So you can see this is the it has the picture of the lamp. Very, very nice. All the way over here, here's the logo, Aladdin, Disney's Aladdin. And this movie is coming out in less than seven days. And then here you have the bag. And here you have, of course, Aladdin himself looking at the lamp, and here you go. So this is an exact replica of the um, magic lamp from the movie. It comes very well packed, it's all taped up, and the inside, of course, is uh, in all these like foam, and then the lamp is very, very um, securely placed in the foam. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the color box. You can see the Cave of Wonders in the background. The price was $149.95, plus shipping and tax. Let's see if there's anything special on the back. Doesn't really look like it. Tells you where you can shop, shopdisney.com. There's a Disney store in Europe as well as in Asia. 
And uh, as you can see, you can also get it at the Disney parks in France. So interesting kind of how they decide where these types of collectibles are available. <clears throat> but I got mine from the Shop Disney Web app. app. So let's kind of bring this here. So number one, um, this lamp is made out of metal, uh, not uh, resin or glass or anything like that, which is a nice touch, um, pretty classy, Not doesn't feel cheap at all. If you lift it, there's definitely a nice weight to it. Um, being made out of metal, you would think they would require the least protection, but they totally overprotected it. Double boxed it, you know, they put it in with foam and packing. They had like this nice little see-through tape to secure the lid. So um, it's very nice. I certainly can't complain. Uh, you can actually take this thing off so the cap can be removed. So it's kind of giving you a little bit of the detail of this thing. We'll put it aside. Um, if you look here, you can see that it's actually uh, I guess a work, uh, if you want to call it that, a working lamp. You can actually pour, pour oil through it or whatever you want. If you put water here, you can pour it out. So it's, it's functional. And then if you look inside, again, um, you know, it's actually hollow on the inside. It's just like a real lamp. You can imagine that the genie is actually living in there. So here's a nice design, a little S handle. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time pretty beautifully engraved on the side. Nice detailing. Here it goes. And of course the base. Give it a little rub, see if a genie pops out. See if it's symmetrical on both sides. So here, so yeah, I believe it is symmetrical. So that's good. See the engravings on the bottom as well. And at the very bottom, you can actually see again the limitation 4,000. Made in China. It's a little bit disappointed that they don't actually number it. Uh, a lot of other Disney collectibles, uh, it is numbered. So if you're looking forward to a great replica from the actual movie, as authentic as it gets, then this is it. Nice and nice and metallic. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. It also comes with a certificate of authenticity, but again, um, all the certificate shows is is that it is. Um, one of 4,000, unfortunately, does not number it at all. Let me see if I can get it out with one hand. So, here it is. We'll take a look at that. This is the Genie's Lamp. And again, just says limited edition of 4,000. You can pause it and read if you so wish. And the other side is the same thing, French. So, not much more to say other than that. You know, it's a pretty simple uh, collectible. The, the thing is, like, you know, you, you see it, it's kind of hard to appreciate it. But it's really neat to actually have like a real metal version of the lamp from the movie. And uh, they never really, you know, sold something like this for the animated version. Um, I love the prestige poster uh, of the original movie which kind of showed the lamp glowing so that was one of my favorite movie posters when I was a, a kid 
And one of the nice things about uh, this metal is it's not pristine, you know. Um, it's not like this amazing golden lamp encrusted with jewels and you know, something out of gold. Um, it's just like a very simple brass, I guess, or copper lamp. And that's sort of the idea <coughs> behind it is that now this thing, which would be lost in like a treasure trove of jewels and gold, etc., cetera, um, is actually the most valuable thing in the Cave of Wonders. And um, much like the Holy Grail from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, which was just a simple cup, um, now the, the, the lamp is supposed to look old and beaten up. It's supposed to look like something you wouldn't spend more than a few dollars on. And, you know, uh, based on that, you know, it's got little tiny imperfections, a little hole here, nicks and scratches and that type of thing. Uh, it looks kind of a little bit worse for wear. Uh, and so I think they replicated that pretty faithfully. Um, and it's good for them too, right? So they don't have to be perfect in terms of the finish. So I think that that's also kind of a very nice um, aspect of the story, so to speak. So you know, pretty pleased I got it. I finally got in at the ground level on one of these collectibles. I'm really happy with it. It'll be a really nice display piece. And uh, I hope that the live action movie um, you know, will live up to expectations. It's got great songs, a nice story. Um, it'll be really hard, of course, to top Robin Williams' performance as the genie, but I hope that Will Smith can bring his own unique uh, flavor and charm to the role. Um, and again, looking forward to it. I'm a big Disney fan, and I'm really happy I got this uh, replica lamp. If you're interested in it, go to the Shop Disney uh, app and get one because uh, I can almost guarantee you that uh, after the movie is out, it's going to sell out and it's an escalated price. I mean, even right now, with it being widely available on the app, there's scalpers on eBay who are kind of counting on the ignorance of the average um, you know, populace who are trying to sell this for double the price. It's already going for like $300 on eBay. So um, they're not surprised. Cinderella Slipper, uh, I think, retailed for $100 and was selling at its maximum for seven, eight hundred dollars after Cinderella came out. You know, and these are and these don't these don't have to be billion dollar hits. I mean Cinderella live action did not make anywhere near a billion dollars. I think it was a very modest sized success. Um, but there's enough you know Cinderella fans who are into that movie that they were gonna spend the money on it. And um, you know, a month into Cinderella's release, her slipper, the cheap version believe it or not, was going for um, eight hundred dollars, you know, even today. As unbelievable as it is, when all the hype has completely dissipated, that version is still going for like I think five hundred dollars. So it's still a little bit crazy. So Aladdin is beloved by a lot of Disney fans. Um, it's a great movie, and if it's going for a double price now, when the movie hits next week, uh, I can see this lamp going the same way, probably going for anywhere from five, six, seven hundred dollars uh, at its peak. You know, in the past, when, when they did um, the Cinderella version, the live action, as well as the live action Beauty and the Beast, <clears throat> the Swarovski, they had a, a relationship again with Swarovski crystals. And Swarovski would put a ultra expensive, ultra limited version, really, really high class version, both for the slipper and the rose, and they would you know, sell those. And those were thousands of dollars. But I think for Aladdin, I don't think there's, there's that relationship doesn't exist anymore because it doesn't make any sense. Uh, Swarovski really isn't something that you would make sense in the Middle East um, where this story takes place. And of course, the treasure of the story is the lamp. And Swarovski um, is not very well suited to that. So um, I, think, I think this is about as good a version of the lamp as we're going to get. Um, it would be nice to have like this over-the-top beautiful one, but it wouldn't really fit again with the theme of the story. Um, so I'm happy with this. I think this might be all we're going to get in terms of the lamp. And I've wanted a lamp like this for such a long time, like ever since I was a kid, like a teenager watching the original animated Aladdin. So now as an adult, uh, decades later, I finally get my wish for a prop, a truly um, good quality prop uh, replica. It just took a live action movie to get it done. So hope it didn't bore you too much with my uh, thoughts. Um, I think this is one of the this will be one of the first uh, reviews out there of this thing. So hopefully that will give you some more information, and um, you know, you may it'll drive you to pick it up or whatnot. I love really love the the, the metal design and of course the, the 
the detailed um, engravings and filigrees on the side here on the lamp and on the base as well. Very, very nice. Until next time, do take care.